thank you. This is the October 17, 2022 Parks and Recreation Committee, a part of Brooklyn Community Board 2. As you know, we record these for public access and archiving in accordance with the New York State Open Meetings Law. Uh, as always, we encourage all of our committee members to have their cameras on. If you're attending this uh, as a public member, as a pub member of the public, we invite you to turn your camera on as well. And we ask everyone to mute their microphones when they aren't speaking. So uh, we have uh, a, a great program for you this evening. Um, we're going to start with uh, introducing the committee members. As I mentioned, I'm Barbara zoller Bringer. I'm the chair of the committee. My co-chair, Andrew Leslecki, is not here this evening. Mackenzie has joined us. Why don't we start with you, Mackenzie, just saying good evening and, and your name. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Fillo. Welcome. Sabrina? Yeah, hi, my name is Sabrina Razzi. I'll have my camera on shortly, thanks. Doug. Hi, everybody. Uh, Doug Bettner. Nice to see you. Welcome. Candice. Hi, everyone. My name is Candice Harrison, and I'm a member of the committee. Welcome. Uh, Thomas. Hi, I'm Thomas Suji. Good to see everyone. And thank you so much for taking the minutes. This evening. Really appreciate it. Oh, Richard, you're on mute, Richard. Hi, Richard Morrow. Okay. Carolyn, did we hear from you? Hello, I'm Carolyn Hubbard, coming on weary. Thank you for being here. And Melinda. Yes, Melinda's here. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. Okay, I think we heard from everybody on the committee. Um, you have a copy of the agenda, hopefully. Um, do I have a motion to accept the agenda as set forth? I make the motion to set the agenda. I, I thank you. I, before we have a second, I just want to say I want to move up the chairperson's report to um, number five uh, before we get started. So with that amendment, um, do we have a second for the adoption of the agenda? A second. Doug, thank you. Anyone opposed? All right, Leonard, um, another member of our committee, Leonard Levinson, is now here. Thank you for being here. Okay. Hearing no objection, the motion, the adoption of the agenda <laughs> is, uh, the agenda is adopted. Uh, moving on to the minutes from our last meeting. Does anybody have any changes to the minutes? Any edits? Okay. Uh, I want to thank uh, Sabrina and um, Andy took the minutes last time. So um, I really appreciate it. A really good job done. Uh, I don't know if your name is. Uh, is there Mr. Amritha or your first name is Amritha? But I, I see a hand raised. Do you want to bring up something at this point about the minutes? Apologies, that's an error. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you for being here. So before we jump forward, I want to uh, move up the chairperson's report. Uh, I want to remember, remind all the members of also board members that next Tuesday night, um, October 25th, we are having a very important special meeting that I believe we've gotten two notices about so far. It's for the uh, selection of the new district manager. Um, if you have not yet, first of all, thank you to those who have responded to the chair's email on this. And if you haven't, I'll responded to the emails yet, please do that as soon as possible after this meeting, trying to ensure that we have a quorum for that meeting. It's very, very important. Um, and we also, you know, 
hopefully we'll be able to hire a few other people for the office. We're right now we only have one person operating the office. And so it's very important that um, as many people as possible attend next Tuesday night. So please respond um, to Mr. Singletary's email. That's the way we know if we have enough people. So um, when I, I just got off phone talking about this. So it's very important that we have the meeting. It's very important that we have a quorum so we can move forward on this. Um, so that said, I want to move on now. Uh, we have, we're very fortunate tonight to have uh, Davy Ives, who's the chief of staff of the New York of the Parks Department for uh, Brooklyn, who is here not that long ago, either May or June. And um, we're, we're very much interested always to hear updates on the status of our um, the capital projects of the parks. I, I don't know, I, I don't see everybody who's on the call right now, but do we have anyone else from your office here tonight? No, it's just it's just me tonight. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So we're going to turn this over to you. All right. Um, so yeah, good, good evening, everyone. Just thank you for for taking the time to be on the meeting tonight. Um, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to share my screen in a little bit with a presentation that some of you guys have seen before. Um, it just basically runs down the current update of all of the uh, capital projects within the limits of Community Board 2. Could I ask you to just hold that for yep. one second? Okay. Sure. Okay, thank you. All right, so, um, so yeah. Well, I'm going to share my screen. We'll go. We can go over the um, the capital um, process or the capital projects within Community Board Two. Um, there are a number of them at any given time in various states of design or construction or the middle stage where we procure a contractor called procurement. Um, we also have a couple that are funded by the council member and the, and the mayor's office, so that are going to be new for this year. So at some point, there'll be a community input meeting. Um, so we can go over that. Um, and so basically, I'll just run through the process, the, the projects, and then we'll afterwards, if you have any questions about parks, I'm happy to do my best to answer it. And if I can't answer your question directly, um, we either through Barbara or Taya, um, we can follow up and I can get you the answer to that later on. All right. Sound good? So now I'm going to, I'm just going to share my screen. All right. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. All right. Okay. Um, great. So yeah, we are community board too, right? This is the October report. All right, so this is uh, Dr. Susan Park, which I think the group is, has been calling it with um, Suzanne, who I don't know if Suzanne is still on the community board. No, she's not. Okay, so former former community board member Suzanne um, is, maybe she's spending her time now as the friends of Dr. Susan Park. So we're really thankful to those group. This project was delayed for a little bit because uh, of some issues with the contractor, but all of that's been resolved. Um, it's a brand new park. It's really exciting. Um, synthetic turf area with a walk around track um, and then a new brand new playground right next to Farragut houses. So um, this opened up earlier in uh, the summer. Um, and so we were really excited to have that open. Um, the next project. The next project is under construction. Um, so Washington Hall Park, this is right off, I think, Park Avenue. Um, next to the BQE. It's a pretty simple replacement in kind project where we're just replaced. There are two basketball courts. We're going to be replacing those basketball courts. We would have loved to do more with the budget, but um, that's kind of, I think, the basketball courts. And I think we're actually 
adding the handball court if if we can. Um, so though that's the extent of the project, it's not touching the playground or the um, comfort station, but you'll have brand new courts with, you know, Lexan backboards and kind of state of the art um, color seal coat and, uh, and much more level surfaces. So that started in the summer and should be done next summer. Most, for, for people who are new, most parks capital pro projects take one year in construction. That I think it's the easiest way to think about it is it takes a year in design, a year in procurement to procure a contract and then a year in construction. Um, later on, maybe when, when, when we put together the minutes, I can send you a link to what's called the capital tracker, uh, which has some information about just our capital process and um, how parks are constructed in New York City and and ways to track your projects, you know, that are closest to you. Um, and higher. That sounds out. great. Thanks, All right. Steven. Great. Okay, next one, Commodore Barry. Okay, so this is actually a minor project in Commodore Barry. So you have the bigger Commodore Barry. This is a excerpt from the master plan that we did a couple of years ago for, for Commodore Barry. Um, it's the it's the comfort station. So the bathroom, we're actually um, gonna be redoing the bathroom. We're reconfiguring the inside so that it meets ADA standards and it's more accessible to people um, and just kind of tweaking the the layout of the bathroom um so it's the same structure but we're going to be wrapping it in a new envelope as well so it's a bit more energy efficient as well so this started uh in the spring and it's a slightly longer contract it's an 18 month contract so it's going to be done next fall in uh 2023 um yep now the next this is a more exciting part of the commodore barry world um the big field is actually going to be going under construction, um, hopefully next summer. Um, the, and it's going to be converted into turf, and it's going to be given a, a walking track around it. Um, so we're really excited about this. What um, synthetic turf gives us a lot more playability, so we're able to um, program it a lot more. This project, the, the budget build. The budget is pretty large, $10 million might seem like a lot, but with construction prices in New York City, it's kind of just enough to get the field. Um, but one of the nice things also about this project is we're going to be adding sports lighting, um, which is enormous for us from a permitting standpoint, because uh, it allows just so much more um, time to play, especially in the winter when it gets dark early um, after school. So we're really excited about that project. We're hoping that it, it um, it starts in the summer. Um, there were some investigations that we had to do with underground uh, stuff underground, but I think with the new design, we, we've been able to address that. Um, and that was the reason for the delay in the design process. All right. And so this is the, and then this next project this is phase three, um, is uh, um, the big asphalt area and playground. So we got $10.5 million from the mayor this year for that project, uh, which is really exciting. Um, we're going to be working, we're going to have, we're definitely going to have a community input meeting uh, by the end of fiscal year 23. So the fiscal year ends in on June 30th, 2023. So basically within yeah, within a year, we're going to be having a community input session for this right. for this park. So the exact scope of work, I'm not sure we know just yet, like how much is going to be playground and how much is going to be um, uh, uh, a multi-purpose kind of play area. This is roughly just like a, a conceptual drawing. I would say don't get attached to what you see in that purple box. Um, it's essentially a blank slate that we're going to that we will work with the community to find um, a solution on what, what goes in there. Um, so ex really excited about this project. Um, it's gonna be starting next year, or sorry, it's gonna be starting design by the end of the fiscal year, which is June 30th, 2023. Um, so look out for that and we'll work with community board too. And obviously the parks committee um, to help get the word out um, as well as the, the friends of Comro Barry. All right, Fort Greene, the big one. Um, so Fort Greene, so, this is just kind of an overview slide. Um, it, uh, we've expanded the scope from the original phase two project. Um, so 
I think the best way to think about Fort Greene is there are four phases. Um, the first phase is this area in gray, and you can see the description right there. Um, it's that entrance on Willoughby. Um, we did that a couple of years back. I think it was finished back in 2015. Um, and then we got more funding to do uh, the second phase, which is, and I'll go, I have some slides that go into more detail on this. So the second phase is this golden area, as well as this ponding area, um, also on Washington. And then phase three is the original scope of the Parks Without Borders project, which is the Myrtle Avenue side, um, and then the, the lower plaza. Um, and then, and sorry, and also this, this the staircase on DeKalb. Um, and then the fourth phase is um, the, the portion that we added to the scope of the work um, and that, um, Kind of, and now we're under review for the environmental assessment statement. Um, so um, that's that, and the fourth phase consists of just kind of adding some paths, some actually paths that used to historically be in the path. Um, there are lots of cut through these this dotted line. It's kind of an original path that we're restoring. So um, let me take you through the next couple of slides. So, like I said before, um, this is phase two. Um, and it's the paths on that northeast quarter, um, just redoing path work, um, doing some of the, um, um, and, and sorry, and stabilizing some of the landscape as well to, to address some erosion issues. Um, this project was eventually partnered with the Parks Without Borders project, which is the next slide, phase three. Um, this is the much bigger project. It actually does, um, does this whole area, this whole plaza area, um, you know, and I think it, it, it went to court um, and we are under review. Um, it's also addresses the other plaza that's on Myrtle Avenue. Um, I think we've, we've talked about it a lot in previous parks committee meetings, but, um, you know, I think it's uh, redoing the basketball court at formalizing the picnic area brand new um, adult fitness. Um, I think it's also opening up sight lines to the monument from the street. Um, it's gonna be doing all, redoing all new paving, expanding tree pits so that the trees can, can, can thrive a little bit more. Um, it will not address the playground. Um, that's just not in the budget for this one, but um, I think the other stuff, it's just gonna be addressing really bad asphalt and conditions. It's gonna be bringing up New, um, new security lighting, and uh, and as well, it's also going to be doing the per, some of the perimeters of the park, especially like the sidewalk on Myrtle Avenue, which is in not great shape. Um, so, let me move on to the next slide. Uh, we don't have really a, a rendering for the fourth phase because it's just a it's just path work and some uh, hillside stabilization. It's a much bigger presentation that I'm trying just to shorten up into a little bit here. Um, so the 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 thing I'll also say about um, phase the, all all of those phases is that we're currently um, we're currently going through the environmental assessment statement and the and this and the city's seeker process um, to to for environmental review. Um, and uh, we are working on the, the lead agency. We've issued a lead agency letter, which essentially says that we think that the Parks Department should be the lead agency on this project. We're still waiting for, for comments to see um, if any other agency wants to pick it up. Uh, from there, then we will either issue a declaration that it does have a major impact, environmental impact, or it doesn't have a, a major impact environmental impact. Um, I'm doing the best I can. I am not an expert on this process. Um, so this is um, the best I can kind of gurgitate it back to you guys. Um, if you have any more questions, I'm happy to get more detail um, as needed. All right, so that's enough for the Fort Green. If you have questions, keep them in your mind. I'm happy to revisit it as well. Um, the next one, Kyler Gore. So Kyler Gore, hey. Uh, yeah, Kyler Gore is, we are being told it will start in the spring. So we're really excited about this. It's definitely a site that's very old. 
uh, very tired. So kind of play equipment that's just been used a ton. So we're excited that this is going to be renovated to brand new play equipment, uh, redoing a lot of pavement that settled over time. You have the, I think it's the C train that runs underneath the site. Um, so, you know, coordination with, with MTA on any issues there, um, as well as, um, you know, adding just new new game tables and kind of cleaning up the layout. Uh, I know that there was a lot of push for a dog run at the site, but um, because of some parameters like the MTA tunnel underneath, um, it just, it wasn't possible. So I just want to put that out there because it was a major uh, point of discussion at the community input sessions we had uh, for this. All right. Um, yeah, the next one, Green Playground. This is a pretty straightforward project. Um, it's just a, a, you know, it's a replacement of what's what's already there, but but bringing it up into the you know 21st centuries or yeah 21st century standards. So um, we're really excited to um, for this one to happen. Um, we're also told by our construction people that it's going to be starting this spring. So I would take that with a grain of salt, but. Um, but yeah, we, we anticipate the project will start in the spring um, and that it will take one year to complete. So, you know, basically just brand new play, play equipment and also I should say play, play equipment that has kind of um, elements for children of all abilities. So it's got ground play, it's got, um, you know, play structures that are designed in a way for people who are, um, have mobility constraints um, and so, and we're really excited about this one to start. All right, the Brooklyn War Memorial. So I don't know if many of people on the line are aware, but there is a bathroom in the basement of the Brooklyn War Memorial, which is a very popular spot, especially for people that maybe are on a long walk over the bridge. Um, the, the War Memorial is also the headquarters for all of the District 2 uh, park staff. So it's kind of an important um, building for us as well. Um, in, in the basement, we're basically bringing the bathroom up to um, today's codes. It was built in the 40s, um, so we're just renovating it. Um, additionally, uh, we had a water line break um, that happened in the last, I would say, month or two. So um, as of today, we just got an update from a different contractor that will ha hopefully have the water service restored to this building. Um, either way, Project started in the spring and we anticipate it'll finish next spring. Um, if I'm, I'm sorry if I'm droning on too long, it's a lot of information I'm throwing no, at you. So it's, it's really good to hear yeah. it. Yeah, okay. and I'll send you this presentation at the end so you guys Terrific. can have it, all right? Um, okay. Okay, so Cabman Plaza, this is, this is the Northern Lawn. So the warm room area we were just looking at is right there. Um, Cabin Plaza West is at the top of the page. It's kind of rotated slightly. Um, but um, this project is to redo the lawn. The lawn is just kind of, you know, natural turf gets compacted over the years. Um, so it's to redo the lawn. It's also to redo all the paving around it, which is just old and has been cracked for, for quite a bit of time. Um, and uh, adding new security lighting into it. So just, you know, the standard... Uh, light poles that you see in the park, they'll just be upgraded with bright LEDs. Um, so it just feels a bit safer walking through there when it's dark. Um, I would also say there are a lot of beautiful mature trees in this area. Uh, and we've done everything we can to protect those trees in this contract and uh, add more trees where, where possible. So um, the, the trees will not be impacted by the lawn uh, restoration project. Um, and yeah, um, and so this project is going to, we are also told it's gonna to start in the spring. So it's a lot of projects gonna be starting in the yeah. spring in district two. Um, all right. I would say the spring, you can roughly think of the spring starting in about February and going through uh, June. So uh, the spring in terms of parks is a long spring. I'll just say that. Also, staying in Cabin Plaza, um, this was um, thanks to, to Lincoln Wrestler really pushing on it. Um, this is a project to redo the, the synthetic turf at Cabin Plaza. Um, most of the contracts we've looked at are, are, are traditional 
capital contracts. Um, this project is a newer project. It was just funded this year, um, but it's going to go under one of our limited scope, what we call a limited scope project. Um, so they've they would just basically come in and redo the synthetic turf, and that's it. So there's no paving, there's no uh, plumbing, there's no water service. It's just a straight up ripping up the the existing carpet. Um, that's the synthetic turf, addressing any issues with the with the sub base, and then putting down new carpet, adding infill, and then moving on to the next one. A lot of times they're in multi-site contracts, so it's one contractor that's addressing a couple different sites um, in Brooklyn. So it's a much shorter timeline than the typical one-year timeline. So that's where you see it's we've been told, and I would say take this with a grain of salt because you know I think our contract our construction team wants to start everything all at the same time, but sometimes there it gets does get caught up. But we believe it's going to start in this next fall and it will be completed by next sometime in the spring of 2014, which is great. Um, okay. Sticky in Cabin Plaza. There's a lot of stuff happening in Cabin Plaza. Um, this is a restroom that we came to you guys with a while ago. It seems like it feels like a while back. Um, we finished this, we finished the design actually in the fall of 2020. Um, but um, construction is slated to start next spring. I think we had some issues with having to rebid this project out um, to get a good contractor. Um, but we anticipate that we're going to start start this project in the spring as well. Okay, uh, this is another new project that we're really excited about. Um, thanks to Crystal Hudson and some, some uh, negotiation with the speaker, um, she was able to fund Oracle Playground. Um, so th it's, this is a, it's three and a half million dollars for the playground, which is great. Um, I think it, you know, it's just an older playground. It's a little bit tired. So um, we're really excited for this to start. Um, at some point um, during the, it's similar to Common Barry. We'll have a community input session for this park, uh, and we'll definitely be looping you guys in um, on that meeting. Um, and uh, we'll hopefully have that community input meeting by the end of uh, this fiscal year, which ends again, um, June 30th, 2023. Um, and then actually at Oracle, we have another project that's happening. Um, and this is, um, supposedly going to start later in the fall. So Parks does partner with the Department of uh, Environmental Protection to uh, on what's called green infrastructure projects. So these are projects that um, are designed to catch stormwater before it gets to the the um, to either waterways or the sewage treatment plants. Um, and the, the thought is to take water out of those those streams so that it doesn't overwhelm um, our sewage treatment plants or our waterways. Um, and so what it does is basically takes the water during rain. It's designed to take, I think it's the first inch or so of rainwater, don't quote me on that, um, but it's to take the first inch or so of rainwater, um, put it into the ground, hold it, and then slowly leach it back out uh, once you know our infrastructure has had a cat time to catch up. Um, and uh, and and um, be able to treat treat it. So um, yeah. So this is this is going to be on a contract that includes some other sites in the area. Class and playground, which uh, I think is is there's actually it's actually the class and playground in district one. I think it's district one or district three. It's right on the corner. It's right where one, two, and three meet. So it's it's the class and playground in district one. There's also a class and playground in district two. Um, Oracle playground and then Colonel David Marcus playground, which is um, in Southern Brooklyn. So we anticipate this project is gonna start sometime in the fall. They're pretty quick projects. Uh, and what, what you'll be left with is a brand new um, paved surface. Um, so this in conjunction with the three and a half million for the playground will be, you know, hopefully transform the site uh, into a completely new space. Um, the, the, this project, so the next two projects are also green infrastructure projects. So Parham playground, um, two of the basketball courts or two of the half court basketball courts are going to be repaved in, um, 
what's it called, oh, called porous asphalt. So it's, a, it's an asphalt that actually catches the water um, rather than it sheeting into a drain and then going into a system there, it's actually gonna be porous asphalt. Um, so it's a brand new type of asphalt that allows water to actually run into it. They've tried it in other cities. Um, so we're gonna be trying it in Brooklyn as well. Um, I don't know exactly, I think the project is estimated to start in the fall, but um, we'll, I think we'll, we'll have more detail as they establish that contract. Um, great. And then the, the last project, I think, this is, yeah, this is the last project. Um, this is class and playground. This is the, uh, oh, maybe this is the class and playground. It's not the one in one. I'm sorry about that. Um, class and playground, it's a big asphalt area. They're going to be using this area to capture stormwater. Um, so I think this one is going to be um, uh, a retention tank that's underground that actually catches the water. Um, so the water will sheet to a drain, so it won't look any different than a typical asphalt area, uh, except that it will be brand new. Um, and there'll be a retention system underneath that holds onto the water and then kind of slowly lets it percolate out into the ground. Um, and again, it avoids going into the, in, into the waterways or into the wastewater system. Um, so yeah, so and I think that is that's the last slide. So. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. That was a lot of talking on my end. Um, and I, I haven't checked the chat, but um, yeah, I think um, there might be, Barbara, I'll turn it over to you. How about that? Thanks, David. That was a great presentation. And it, it seems we've made a lot of progress since our your last report, which really wasn't that long ago. So that's good. You know, it's always a little frustrating. Um, as to how long these projects take, but um, it's really good to hear that we're moving along. Before I open it to other to questions from other committee members, uh, I have a question. Uh, you mentioned several projects towards the beginning where you're replacing synthetic turf, and that has been a major issue for this committee. Um, we've heard even recently about concerns all over the country uh, about the contents of synthetic turf. So I'm wondering if you can tell us what this new synthetic turf will be made of, and hopefully it will be different from what we've got out there now. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I think a lot of the older older model synthetic turf. Um, the I think the issue is with the infill. Um, if you've ever played, it has these like black um, kind of bits on it and possibly toxic so yeah so a, a lot of the earlier models of that you know i think there was kind of in the 90s there were those really tough it was basically just a carpet laid down with nothing in it and then they went to the um the the form where it kind of looks like actual blades of grass but it has the black infill pellets stuck in it and a lot of the earlier models of that were um like crushed up or recycled tires and, right. and in that process obviously tires are made of whatever they're made of um, and as they decompose um, it's it can have toxins in it um, the spec that i think I, and i can get you more information on this moving forward um, so barbara i'm happy to follow up right. with more details but from what i'm aware of the latest spec that we use is um, it's actually sand that's coated in uh, in silicon, um, so it's it's designed not to be um, you know carcinogenic or or have any any health health benefit health risks. Um, and would that be the same material that is being used on all these replacement of turf projects? Um, yes, where it so like Common or Barry definitely. Um, I think, I'm not sure if you have any of the smaller, sometimes on the smaller turf projects, um, I don't think you have any others in your district, but um, the Commodore Barry and, and Cadman will get the, the infill type. Um, on some of the smaller like schoolyard projects, what, what they'll do is they'll actually just, it's basically just a, a shock pad, it's asphalt and then a shock pad. Oh. Um, that absorbs the impact, and then a, a carpet of, you know, like AstroTurf on top. And um, do you know what the synthetic turf is in the um, the new Susan, Dr. Susan Park, as you refer to it? Oh, yeah. I think that's a good, I think that's the shock pad. 
that's a shock pad okay. staff. So that's a slightly smaller. And if it's not, then it's then it's going to be the silicone covered sand. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know offhand. All right, because as I said, I think this is a very important issue to the committee members here and very concerned mm -hmm. um, that we provide yeah. a safe environment, especially yeah. when we have the opportunity to redo these parks um, to make sure that, that that's the, the case. And, and, and Lucy brought up, a, I see it just in the chat, Lucy brought up a good point about the, the, the heat on the turf. Um, where we can, we try to plant trees nearby, but obviously planting new trees is not really going to cover it. Um, but the the new the new turf material and especially the infill are designed not to hold heat in the same way. Uh, we also, for every synthetic turf field, we try to put a mister next to it to to you know to try to cool. It's not a perfect system, obviously, but to try to provide some sort of cooling, um, you know. I think, yeah, definitely the heat breaking down whatever's in those older turf models um, can be an issue, but um, yeah. Okay, thank you for that. As far as the microplastics, uh, I'm assuming you're talking about the actual grass. Uh, I'm not sure we have, um, I don't have an answer for you on that, but uh, yeah. Are, are you mean, speaking to me or something in the uh, chat? Sorry, Lucy, Lucy just okay. put another comment in about microplastics. Okay. Um, yeah. I, so, I mean, the microplastics from, from the actual carpet material, um, you know, I think it's probably designed to be a little bit sturdier than it was in the, in the past. So, um, you know, I think the, the lifespan of a turf field is about 10 years normally. So if we had a budget, we would be regularly replacing it. Cabman Plaza is probably just past that. Um, and that's why it's getting, got funding to, to be replaced. Okay, thank you. So Candice, I saw your hand raised first. Hi, I just have more of a comment, not really a question. Um, for Dave, some feedback from you, maybe I don't know why. Barbara, do you want to try muting? Or I can try muting as well. Um, okay. Is that better? Not, not really, but I can hear you if you want to go. Okay, it's, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. It's not really a question, just more of a comment. So I'll put it in the chat. Sorry about okay. that. Okay. All right, Thank Richard. You. Yes, hi. Um, I'm new on the committee. Uh, so what I've been doing for the last couple of weekends is uh, visiting all the playgrounds and parks in our district. Uh, and I have to com com commend you and your staff. They are really well kept. I mean, they're clean. I, I was there. I usually go scooting uh, with my scooter at around uh, six in the morning. So it's it's kind of desolate, but uh, you can see that the place is kept really clean. And I'm, I'm very proud to be a New Yorker and on this committee and just tell you how great that is. Getting back to the reason why I joined this committee was because of the uh, artificial turf that was going to be replaced at Cadman Plaza Park, which I use uh, extensively. I live down in Dumbo and I'm always going through the park. And for, since that was put down, the smell has been atrocious. I wrote a report, which I gave to Barbara. I did research on that and South Oxford Park uh, playground, uh, where you're also planning to do it. And, and it's, it's just horrific what, what, what I found there. Um, that's a real concern. I, I think the other thing is, is that um, all artificial turf is made with uh, PFA essence, all of it. There's no turf that is not made with it. That's how it's made. And uh, th th it creates methane levels. Uh, the, the, it's still going to bleed the microplastics into the water system. Um, this stuff is deadly. And uh, I, I know I, I sent the report to Barbara. <clears throat> the mayor of Boston has already banned artificial turf in her city. It's said banned. They don't want it. Nobody wants it. Um, even the professional football teams are canceling it. Soccer teams, the Prof soccer federation bans it. Uh, because of the carcinogenic effect of it. Um, I, the EPA is the one that came out with this. I just, I, I put, I, if I can do this, oh, jeepers, I don't know how to get this thing out. I always forget that to everyone. Let me see if I can get you a, ah, I did it. That's the, that's the uh, report that came out from the EPA. I put it in the chat. You can read it. It's very thorough and very clear. Uh, this stuff is deadly and they don't care if it's new or old or in between. Uh, this stuff should, I mean, Right now, I think Cadman Plaza should be put on a quarantine. 
I see kids playing there from St. Anne's. I took pictures of them. I see the soccer guys playing there. This stuff is going to get them. Those little pebbles and stuff are all over the place. I can pick you pick them up it's like sand yep. in your hand. I, I just let me finish. I, I know you have something to say, but let me get my rage out, <laughs> if I may. Um, I, I, you know, I, it's it's really it should be banned. I should be warned that this is a danger for these kids in the future. It's not maybe now and in five years, but in twenty years, in fifteen years, in thirty years, this is carcinogenic. This is this is what's happening here. Thank you. I would definitely hear you. I think as far as the crumb rubber from, I think the EPA report that you sent. Um, yeah, definitely. We don't, we don't spec that anymore for our fields. Um, I, I don't know about the actual carpet material and it looks like maybe I haven't read the, the Boston article um, about what it is. Um, but, you know, if it's about the, the actual carpet, the green, the green stuff, not the black pellets or the or the sand pellets no, they're um, talking about the whole the whole thing they're, they're talking about what what what, what yeah. it is made of what what components are there yeah the components are pfas that's what the components are whether it's in the grass or in the the, 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 the sand in the bottom with the silicone whatever that is there's still that contaminant in in the in this product so uh, you know it, it, just something to consider. Uh, I'm going to be forceful in terms of seeing if I can get it banned from the city. <laughs> but uh, in the meantime, I, I think you should be really aware of of, uh, of, of these things. Listen, yep. when I went to some of your playgrounds, uh, you know, the playgrounds that don't have the artificial, most of them don't. It was such a relief to go in there and smell dirt and smell trees and to smell the flowers. It was it, it's refreshing. It's not like going into, you know, these playgrounds where you have the parks where you have this synthetic stuff. I mean, it's like Cabinet Plaza. I tell my friends I don't even go there. I have to hold my, I wear a mask when I walk by it. But uh, uh, the smell is so bad. At any rate, enough of me. Um, Davey, uh, Taya just put in the chat, you know, South Oxford, uh, their friends group has come here a number of times advocating for new turf there. Are there any plans to address that issue? There are not, um, but I can bring it. I know that the commissioner and, and council member Hudson are going on a tour tomorrow, some parts. Oh, great. So maybe that's one of the sites I can flag for them to um, to take a look. Yeah. That would be terrific. Um, yeah. And we really should have that in our statement of needs. I, I don't know if it's in there yet, but um, yep. it, it's yep. really been very problematic. And you've heard heard that from them before. So, okay. Um, Carolyn, you've been patient. Yes, I I, um, I wanted to also uh, thank Richard for his comments because I had some of the same concerns for South Oxford Park and for the replacement of the turf there as well. Um, and I wanted to see that that gets into their budgeting plans. Okay. Yeah, I was I was there last weekend, and yeah, you can see the pellets everywhere. So definitely understand. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Doug. Hi everyone. Um, hi Davy. So I, I've been talking to, to some of the people at the uh, Fort Greene Conservancy. How do their plans in terms of the perimeter wall replacement and or bathroom dovetail with yours and or not? Do you know anything about perimeter wall replacement at Fort Greene Park? And um, the benches along the on the, along the perimeter and the ba bathroom plans. Um, what's the plan for bathrooms? Which which bathroom are they? The planning? bathroom near the playground, the one that you said was not ex not included as part of your school. Yeah, I think I I don't know their specific spec. I should happy to connect with you know Dave Barker works for Parks, um, and so he, he and Rosamund you know are consulting all the time. Um, I'm. I'm not sure of the exact plans for the, the bathroom and the wall replacement. I think the wall replacement is just replacing, is it replacing just some stones that are damaged or is it? Um, well, I'm just curious if there's been uh, I'm not, interaction I, between the park department and the conservancy regarding that. In the yes, that short answer, yes. I, I don't know their, their, their specific plans, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I think, uh, um, whatever they're doing it's it's 
I don't know if the conservancy is raising money to to do it or if it's if they're trying to get parks money. Um, but just just uh, something to flag to follow up. Thank on. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm happy we to have up. in the past, just so you know, Doug, we've had a presentation on the bathroom situation near the playground. And um, I don't have to tell you that for whatever reason, bathrooms are very big ticket items for playgrounds. And, you know, we have talked about other, um, you know, workarounds and other ways to do it. Um, and, but it just in this situation, we haven't heard yet about any plans to fund I think, a, a renovation. I think Barbara, maybe if Shakara wants to, to chime in from the Conservancy. Okay, sure. Welcome, Shakara. Hi. Um, would, so would you like to put on your camera? Oh, it's sorry. up to you. I thought I turned it Thanks. off. All right, thank you, Barbara. Hi, Doug, thank you for your uh, question. So I know we were exploring some uh, potential improvements for the park, uh, but unfortunately everything is currently on a pause at the moment. So we'll definitely be happy to uh, speak on it uh, at another time in the future. Uh, but for now, we're just like focused on um, sort of the more uh, popular items that people have been requesting us to focus on as far as like improvements in the park, like lawn care and all of that. Okay. Thank you for that. All right, uh, Thomas. Uh, yeah, um, so I'm hearing a lot of concerns about synthetic turf. I'm wondering, does uh, is cost the only um, kind of metric the Parks Department uses when deciding between Synthetic, synthetic turf and natural grass? Or are there other, um, I guess, like objectives when, when replacing? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I can, I mean, just, just the, you know, obviously it's, Brooklyn is a very densely populated place. So there are a lot of leagues in the same spot. Um, the natural turf fields that we have just simply don't hold up in the same way that a synthetic turf field does. For example, if it rains, you, you're supposed to let a natural turf field dry out. Um, that's what they do in the professional leagues. They, they're managing the water. And if they do damage it, they're only playing one game a week or so on the field. Um, just the, the use that we're seeing on the fields um, from a permitting perspective, synthetic turf gives us just so many more um, options in terms of, of permitting. Um, I think the other, the other reason that sometimes we use synthetic turf uh, like the case in Red Hook, uh, that's a good example where we had um, known contamination under the ground so that it's actually an engineered system to, to form a buffer between the contaminants underground and, and the, the, the turf, the, sur the play surface. Um, and to do a natural turf, you'd have to, just a much more complicated system that requires monitoring. Um, I, I would say the other factor here is that, you know, it's not only a uh, it's it's more a maintenance thing, you know. Natural turf needs a lot more maintenance um, than synthetic turf, and just with the resources that we have, we just don't have those people. Could you uh, spitball the multiplier of how much more expensive it is to maintain a natural surface? Oh, I mean, I it's it's I don't want to take a stab at a number, but I mean, you know, in synthetic turf, you maybe have to come out once or twice a year to look at it. Uh, you know, a uh, natural turf field, you have to mow it in the summer, you know, on a weekly basis, depending on the, the rain, you have to reseed it every now and then. Um, you know, if people are playing out in the rain, then it gets compacted. Um, and and then, you know, none of the drain, none of the actual natural drainage can work. And, you know, then you get an uneven playing surface and then, you know, quickly it, it kind of goes away. So, um, you know, then then you're left with kind of a, like a, a big, a great example is the lawn in Fort Greene, right? Like I know that Shikara and, and the, the Conservancy are doing everything they can about trying to put grass in Fort Greene, but that, that, that big dust bowl has been, um, you know, it just gets so much use from, from dogs and, and sorry, it's not even going into dogs yet, but like, you know, from soccer, from, from, from different play activities, um, and then once you layer in dogs and, and kind of what um, whatever comes out of dogs does to the, the, the turf material, um, 
you know, it's just a uh, a complicated thing where it's 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 just much harder to maintain a, a, a grass, especially with um, the amount of use it takes. Uh, I, I, I did notice that um, Candace's comment is in the chat. So Davey, I, I don't, you, this might be a good time to uh, comment on that, respond to it. The, sorry, could you repeat that? I said Candace's comment because she had that oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. static sorry, is, in the, yeah. is in the chat. Yeah. So you might want to um, respond to it yeah, at this I'll, point. Maybe I'll read it out for everybody. Um, sure. I live near Washington Hall Park, and I want to know if we get signage for the basketball courts. There are signs which say the playground is closed, but can we have signs that recommend nearby courts? I see people come by, and they are ready to play basketball, but they aren't aware that um, Pratt playground. Yeah, definitely. We can get... Um, we can definitely get you some signs for this the um for that that site um and then they have cut some older trees at this playground and are redoing the handball courts as well yes um i think unfortunately sometimes when we i think when we do a capital project um that's our time to assess kind of the the health of trees and it's an opportunity for us to plant new ones as well so if we are taking out trees we are paying the restitution on them um, the trees could have had different issues. I'm happy to get that information if you want. Um, they could be, could have been rotted inside or had other issues. So, um, and then as far yes, I think they were able to expand the with the amount that they have in the budget to do the the handball course as well. So I hope that that helps. Okay, so there are plans to do the handball courts there. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm just writing that down. All right, uh, Lenny, I see you have your hand up now. Uh, yeah, thank you, Barbara. Uh, I have more maybe a comment than a question and then a question. Uh, my first comment is, um, Davey, you said that it could take up to a week for some of these fields to drain properly after a storm. Um, and it can have a lot of damage if players come on the field in a day or two after. But with the new technology of all the ballparks that are being built today, uh, they drain much faster today. They, they, the the um, technology at City Field, for instance, uh, it can rain there pretty heavily for an hour or two. And then they're playing again. It's not a rain out. The game continues. Um, so I don't know the cost of it. I know that's that's a consideration, but um, it 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 uh, from all I'm hearing about this synthetic turf and how toxic it, it could be, uh, I use could be because well I you know the the uh, the fact that it could be that toxic to begin with period uh, is something I would have to look into. I'm not dismissing that at all, but um, this new um, silicon sand. Uh, pebbles uh, that that are being used today in place of the the uh, tires pieces that did turn toxic after a while. Could that turn toxic after a while too? Because I'm hearing no. All the respect, I'm hearing a lot of answers that say, "Well, it should do this," and we think, and it's new, new, and but but you know some of these answers should be more specific if these things are going to be done and if it's going to be a 10 year fix and I'm not hearing enough specifics. Um, for instance, the silicon sand pebble thing, could they break down into toxicity? Um, Lenny, those are great points. I'm, I'm happy to get you more information about the, the spec that we use and specifically how it relates to different toxins in it. I, I think we selected that because it has it's better uh, for the environment and for the people that use it. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm happy to chase that down Thank um, you. for you. Um, and I mean, as far as comparing our, our baseball fields to city field, I mean, I've never seen a, you know, a child's eighth birthday party on city field with 80 family members. So like, uh, 
you know, they, they, be, one, they have a lot, much bigger budget than right. we do. I'll say that. And then two, you know, it's only, you know, 18 people plus the umpires on the, on the field at any time. So um, it's just, yeah. you know what I mean? I understand that, but I understand there could be other sports and parades in there too. But I mean, the point I really am making is yeah. uh, those baseball players are million dollar investments and the owners are not going to want injuries due to us to a turf problem and these turfs i'm an avid baseball fan i'm a diehard never mind what happened to the mets again but I'm, okay but i'm a diehard fan and, and it's a marvel it's marvelous how, how they construct the fields today there are basically almost no rainouts anymore and i don't know the cost of it but i do I'm think sure it's a lot it should be done I mean, no, we can't just say it should be or sh must be. We, I think studies need to be done uh, to, to either rule it out or see if they're feasible um, to, to be done. Because if a field won't be damaged the next day after a major storm, if it's constructed in the, in the same manner, and it's not a, too large of a budget to do it, I mean, a budget item, in comparison to how it may be done today or has been up to now, it should be looked into. No, uh, definitely, definitely understand. Um, yeah. Okay, did you have a question, Lenny? Um, well, I think the only question I had, Davey is gonna look into. Okay, form. great. Yeah, yeah, I can look into the, you know, what what the spec that we use now, I, I believe it's silicon sand, but I'll, I'll find out more more detail on that. Yeah, I, I think we would all appreciate that. Yep. You know, especially if we're putting you're putting all this money into this new turf. Let's get it right. Yep. You no. Know? Yeah. Yep. Thank thank you, Lenny. Thank you. Thank you. All thank right. You. So now we'll we'll take a few questions um, from members of the public. Renee Collymore, you have a question. Well, yes. Thank you so much. I am here tonight because um, I've been uh, in 2021. I began advocating for a new restroom on the north side of uh, Myrtle Avenue on Fort Wayne Park. And I'm just trying to find out, and I know you guys talked about bathrooms tonight. Um, and I just want to know if this actual bathroom and was in this plan here, because I have a letter that was written from Eric Adams, now mayor, but then by our president to the commissioner of parks at the time for Brooklyn. He said as community leader Renee Collins was brought to my attention that Fort Wayne's Park North Side Comfort Station, a long neglected piece of infrastructure has not been included in the Parks Without Borders funding earmark for this area of the park. The news is tr troubling, especially knowing that one of the goals of Parks Without Borders is to assist in rectifying inequities in parks investments as well as to make parks more accessible to everyone, to assist in rectifying this and as a way to improve the quality quality of life and the dignity of users of the park's north side, namely the residents of the abutting Ingersoll and Walt Whitman of New York City NYCHA author uh, Housing Authority, NYCHA Developments, I am willing to commit capital funding from my fiscal year 2022 capital budget to ensure repairs and upgrades are made to this comfort station. And then he ends the a letter, Eric L. Adams. So Davey, um, and thank you for uh, uh, being the person who is uh, you know, leading this tonight, giving us so much great information to all of you. Is this a letter uh, concerning the North Side bathroom uh, in the budget, uh, being that I, I do have a letter from Eric Adams um, stating that. Where are we with that? Can someone help me here? Thank, thank you, Renee. Yeah, um, I I will I can check our budget. It's I don't think we have it fully funded for fiscal year twenty three. I don't know what I can check our records for what the borough president put in in the fiscal year twenty two budget. Um, but right now it's it's not funded, and unfortunately, um, this is a citywide issue that the price tag on on comfort stations to build a brand new one. Um, and that would be smaller than the one that you have right now is I think hovering around $4 million. Um, you know, the price to retrofit or, or upgrade uh, existing conversations is slightly different. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what the, the conservancy has, has, you know, I would just to, to go to bat for the conservancy, it's beyond what the conservancy can kind of 
be expected to contribute. Um, but I, I don't have any record of, of, I'll check, but I'm pretty sure that it's not funded um, for either fiscal year 22 or fiscal year 23. Okay. Unbelievable. I, to I know. David, you, you, you know that is, um, and, and, and I'm sorry, everyone, but this is such an urgent cause because uh, as you guys are developing a new plaza in the park, uh, and, and might I add that I am not supportive of chopping down so many trees, but the people who live in Fort Greene public housing need to be able to go into that park and have quality time, but be able to uh, use a, you know, a decent restroom. The restroom that is a semi-decent is the restroom at the top of those long stairs that senior citizens cannot walk up. So we need a reputable and kind, decent bathroom that's respectable for folks to be able to use, to be able to enjoy the park and not have to run back into more toxic air in public housing. All and right. So mayor, oh, thank you for that. I, I think any further be. discussion of that letter should be with, with the parks department. R directly. Renee, yeah. I, just checking my records really quickly. There's, there's one and a half million dollars um, in the budget for that from the borough president. Um, I don't know what the scope of work he was intending for that or where he got that cost estimate from, um, but I'm happy to follow up with an official answer on kind of what what's the fate of that funding. So that thank be you so much, Davey. All right. Thank yep. you. Thank you. All right. Well, um, thank you to everyone who asked questions. Um, Davey, clearly this is a group that's very interested in what's going on in our parks. And I, I always appreciate your updates. And as I said, I, I think it's great to hear that some of these projects which were on hold during the worst of the pandemic um, are now moving forward. So we'll, we'll be looking forward to having you come back and tell us that more projects are underway and some have been finished. Well, so. absolutely. And, and, and you know, it's really exciting that we have two projects in Community Board 2 um, to start. So it's going to be that, that multi-purpose area in Commodore Barry and then Oracle Playground as well. Yeah. So that's, that's a lot to look forward to. And we'll definitely reach out to you guys um, to help get out the word for those community input meetings. They'll likely be virtual. Um, we haven't that's gotten great. the directive yeah. to go back, but I think actually virtual works uh, quite well in a number of ways. Um, and then, you know, as far, and just so I, I have my follow-up items, um, you know, I'll, I'll look into sure. the silicone sand um, and kind of our rationale for picking that and, and the, 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 um, any, any health impacts that we're aware of with it. Um, I'll also, for Washington Hall Park, we'll, we'll add some signage about um, nearby basketball courts for people. Um, and then, um, and then I think that just following up on the, the comfort station in Fort Green Park. Okay. Thank you again. Uh, I, I want to move on now. Uh, I'm going to repeat the chairperson's report just in case anyone wasn't paying attention. Parks committee members who are also board members, please respond to the chair. Um, Singletary's uh, inquiry, uh, notice um, about the special district managers meeting coming up next Tuesday evening. And if you haven't yet responded to it, like I haven't, um, please do so as soon as you can after this meeting. I know I will. Other committee business for this evening. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else here who from the community who wants to bring anything to our attention this evening. This is a point in time where also we can talk about any new business for um, the committee to consider. All right. Okay. At this point then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. You see, oh. Uh, Tay is sharing something important with us. Uh, if you just look in the um, chat, the zoning for housing opportunity will encourage the creation of more housing in neighborhoods across the city. Uh, and there is, is there a meeting coming up?
there. Got so much going on here, Teo. Zoning for zero carbon, zoning for economic opportunity. So, oh, it's on right now is what you're saying, this meeting. All right. So uh, some of you may want to copy the link that's in the chat and um, Department of City Planning. Yes, city of yes. Okay. All right. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? All right. I'll move to adjourn. Do I have a second? Richard? Okay. Um, all in favor? Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, not, none opposed. Um, all right, we'll see you next month. And um, thank you for your uh, kind attention and interest this evening. So take care. <laughs>